Hi Audacious Church, my name is Rachel Lassiter and I'm a member of South Location and it's a real joy and privilege to bring today's devotion to you. Uh, I'm using the scripture Psalm 37 verses 1 to 9 and it says, Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Um, we all recognise parts of this scripture. It's all um, some nice bits in there. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. I, I've known these phrases for a long time from childhood. And um, they're easy to repeat and they're easy just to roll off the tongue. But about 25 years ago, God revealed himself to me through the verses and the lines in between, the bits that we like to gloss over. There was something I had been asking God for, uh, but I felt he'd forgotten me. It wasn't that he promised me anything, but it was something I really wanted. However, I came to a realisation that I was more like verse 1, fretting and being envious, than verse 3, trusting in the Lord. Uh, I was more like verse 8, angry instead of the first part of verse 7 being still before the Lord. How often do we just focus on the parts of scripture that work for us, the parts that we can then put before God and, and in our frustration and anger say see look what you've said here without honestly reflecting on the parts around it. I realised that I had to commit my whole life to God, everything including my dreams as well as my fears. I had to have the faith to believe God had my life sorted and mapped out. I had to stop making decisions and choices that I thought might help me get what I want and leave it to God to sort out. I had to stop fretting and being angry when I saw others getting what I wanted. Only when I was truly able to put everything about my life before God was he able to truly work in and through me. It's not a magic formula, nothing changes overnight it didn't certainly didn't change for me overnight however my focus was centered more on God my dreams were still there but delighting myself in God committing my ways to him became easier because I had learned to stop the fretting and anger I'd learned to stop focusing on the lives of others around me God wanted me to get on with the life he had purposed for me to show that I had put my full trust in him for my life I couldn't put my faith and walk with God on hold until he answered my prayers. I needed to trust in the Lord, but I also needed to do good and commit myself to him fully. But God doesn't want us to stop talking to him about those things that are important to him. Or sorry, uh, they're important to us. Those prayers we desperately want answering. But he does want us to stop being frustrated and angry, to put our faith in his abilities, his timings, his plans. I was reminded of this recently in one of the audacious sermons. We need to leave our fears and our hopes, our dreams and our worries and our plans at the foot of the cross. We can still remind God that they're there, about how much they matter to us, but we mustn't keep picking them up and trying to work them out for ourselves. They have to stay at the foot of the cross and we need to continue to commit our ways to him, delighting ourselves in the Lord and trusting in his faithfulness and his provision. Then we will see him work in our lives beyond anything we could ever have imagined or dreamed of. Then we will see answers to our situations that were not necessarily what we had asked for, but are just perfect. I trust this has blessed you today, and I pray that you will have a wonderful day, a day full of faith in what the Lord can do in and through your life. God's blessings on you all.